Hello people, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the filter function in Excel. Very exciting. Now the filter function is a newer function in Excel and I know exactly what the first question is going to be. I don't know if I have the filter function. Well, the easiest way to check is just to click in any cell in Excel and type in equals filter. Now if you can see the arguments underneath like on mine, array include an if empty, then that means that you have a version of Excel that has the filter function. If you can't see anything, then you don't. Now the filter function is available in Excel for Microsoft 365, so if you have that, you're in luck. I think it's also available in the standalone versions Excel 2019 and the latest version 2021. So if you have Excel 2016 standalone, you may not have it. So just check before you start with this tutorial. Now, why do we need the filter function when we've been working for years with our little filter drop downs and been perfectly happy about that? Now, if you're not sure what I mean by the little filter drop downs, regard a my table. Here I have a list of some of the most popular Netflix movies of 2022. And at the top of each column, I have these little drop downs and I can filter if I'm particularly just interested in maybe action movies, I can choose that and it's going to filter my list. So why do we need to have a filter formula if we already have a little filter option just here? Well, there are a couple of disadvantages when it comes to using filters in this way. As you just saw, it is going to refine your list and basically hide all of the other rows, which can sometimes be a little bit of a problem. Also with these little filter drop downs, you're very much limited to just being able to filter where your table currently is. I couldn't do my filter somewhere over here because my data's in a table and I have to filter it in place over here. So with the filter formula, we can basically filter our results and we can output them to wherever we want to output the results to in the spreadsheet. Because it's a formula, we can also combine it with other formulas, which we are going to do in this lesson to make it a little bit more flexible and produce more refined results. So let's take a quick run through of how this works. I'm not going to be able to go through every single option in filter in this lesson, but we'll cover the main points. So once again, let's take a look at our data set. This is just some Netflix movies. I've already put it into a table and I've called it Netflix movies. You can see at the top just there. Now in the middle here, I have some filters. So I want to be able to filter this by the genre and also by the language. And what I want to do is when I filtered, I want to put the list over here in columns H to J. So I want to be able to select a genre from a drop down and have it output the results over here. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to build some data validation drop down lists. You know, I love a data validation drop down list. So we want to grab all of the unique values from the genre and the language columns because we don't want repeats in our data validation drop down list. So once again, I'm going to use my favorite little function, which is another new dynamic function called unique. So let's go all the way over here somewhere out the way. I'm going to type in equals unique and we simply just need to select the array, what we want a unique list of. So let's do the genres first of all. I'm going to hover over the top of the column until I get that little downward arrow. Click. You can see because I've got this in a table, it says the actual table name, Netflix movies genre column. Close the bracket, hit enter. And now I have a unique list of all of those different genres. Now I'm going to do exactly the same for language. So let's type in equals unique. I'm going to select the language range close the bracket, hit enter, and now I have a unique list of all of those. So now that I have these two lists, I can use these to build my data validation dropdown. Now, one other little point, if you want these sorted into alphabetical order, you can add the sort function to your unique formula. And once again, this is a newer dynamic array function. So if I go up to the formula bar, because this is because it's a bit easier to see, I can add sort onto the front here. I don't need to add anything else apart from a closing bracket. And the default is to sort them A to Z. And I now have those sorted. Let's do the same with our list of languages. So I'm just going to put sort on the front and close off the bracket on the end. And there we go. That's a little bit neater. So let's create our data validation dropdowns. I'm going to click in cell F5. 
up to data, data validation. We're going to create ourselves a list and our source is this just here and click on OK. Let's do the same for language data validation. We're going to create a list and our source is this list just here and click on OK. So now I have my drop downs and I can select the genre and the language. And remember, you can always hide these two columns if you don't want them visible. So now that we have that set up, we can construct our filter formula. So over in cell H3, let's type in equals filter. And in this first example, we're just going to filter by one piece of criteria. I'm just going to filter by genre. So our first argument is the array. So the array is basically what you want to return. So it might be that I only wanted to return the title and the genre. If that was the case, I would just need to select the title and the genre columns from my table. Now I want to return all three, title, genre and language. So my array is basically going to be everything. So I can select everything in my Netflix movies table, comma. Now I need to specify what I want to include. So I only want to see results where the genre column is equal to whatever I've selected in the data validation drop down list. So I want to include when the genre column, let's just select that, is equal to whatever we have in cell F5. Comma. The last argument is optional. Do I want it to display a piece of text if it can't find any results? Well, yes, I do. I want it to say no records if it can't find anything. And that is pretty much it with one piece of criteria. Let's hit enter. It says no records because I haven't selected anything yet. So if I click the drop down, select action thriller, it's going to filter the list. Let's go for something else. And you can see different things as I change. I'm getting that filtered list, which is perfect. Now, one thing to remember about these dynamic array functions is that you can only edit them in the cell where you type them in. So you can see I'm clicked over here. The formula is kind of grayed out. It's not until I click in cell H3 that I can then go in and modify this formula. And remember, we can combine this with a sort as well. So if I want to sort these records, I can add a sort onto the front there and close off the bracket, and it's going to sort them into alphabetical order. Now there is a lot more that you can do with sort. You can specify which column you want to sort by, things like that, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. Let's do another filter. I'm gonna delete out the formula because this time I want to filter by two pieces of criteria. So we want to include the language as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say equals filter. Our array, we're gonna return all of the columns, so everything. Now, this time, when it comes to what we want to include, because we have two pieces of criteria, the genre and the language, we need to separate them and put them in brackets. So I'm gonna open a bracket. We want to include if the genre is equal to what we have in cell F5. Let's close off that bracket. And, and we need to put an asterisk in there, which basically denotes an and condition, open bracket, we want to include if the language is equal to whatever we've selected in the drop down in F9. Close it off. Do I want to specify text? Yes. So I'm going to say if it can't find any results, it's going to say no records. And we can then close off our filter formula. Let's hit enter. OK, so now if I select, let's go for English because there's always lots of things in there. And let's go for horror, for example. There we go. And once again, if you want to sort this list, you can add a sort on the front, close it off, and it's going to sort those into alphabetical order by the title. Now, there are so many other options when it comes to working with filter. For example, where we put this asterisk in to do an and, saying we want to only return the movies that are in the horror genre and are in the English language, we could change this to different symbols if we wanted to do an or, things like that. So we might save that for another video, but that is the basic principle behind how the filter function works. If you enjoyed this video, then you know what to do. Smash that old like button, give me a cheeky little follow, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.